What's up guys, Swift here covering everything Chicago Bears with daily videos and updates. I wanted to take a moment to touch on the DeMar Hamlin situation from Monday night. He collapsed on the field. It was the scariest thing I've ever watched during a football game. For the last 24 hours or more, football has not felt as important. The world is still awaiting more definitive news on Hamlin but they continue to donate to his toy drive, which has raised over $5 million in funds already. I will post the link in the description for anyone interested in donating. But needless to say, I didn't think about football as much yesterday for once. I didn't post a video, I took the day off, and I considered taking down my free agent preview that I posted about an hour before Hamlin's injury, but I didn't want to punish my viewers. I'm back today. I actually had this video planned to come out earlier, but the news broke that Justin Fields is going to be out for this weekend's game, so I had to update you guys on that. I will not be posting the video or anything from DeMar Hamlin on this channel, but I will continue to pray for him and his family. I have tons more videos to come this week as we prep for our final game of the season and transition into off-season mode while 14 other teams gear up for the playoffs. Since I didn't post a video yesterday, I wanted to get something out today and something you guys always ask for but I don't spend much time on are mock drafts. With Justin Fields now out for the year, I'm going to be shifting my focus a bit towards the offseason, although I will be doing some player grades and season breakdowns on some guys over the next month or two as well. Keep an eye out for that, but today I'm giving you a couple of mock drafts all featuring one trade down where I wanted to move down a couple of spots to pick up some extra picks. I wanted to move down from the top spots to show you guys how many extra picks we can acquire, but I didn't want to make multiple trades. I'm going to show you the mock draft and briefly walk you through them. Also, I wanted to take this opportunity to draft someone with our first pick that is not named Jalen Carter or Will Anderson. Let's get right into it. My first mock included a trade down with the Indianapolis Colts from number two to number five overall, giving me three extra picks to work with, adding a second, a third, and a fifth round pick. The board fell very differently in this one. With the top four picks not having a quarterback go, it was Miles Murphy, Jalen Carter, Will Anderson, and Brian Brzee. My four favorite D-line prospects off the board, leaving me to pivot at number five. This would be a chance for Poles to trade back again or potentially take an offensive tackle like Paris Johnson Jr. or Peter Skaronsky, but I chose to pivot here and take a guy that I feel like Ryan Poles really likes who also happens to be shooting up the draft boards as a potential top 10 pick. I don't think we'd take him this high, but I do think it's very possible we could end up drafting this guy, Texas Tech edge rusher Tyree Wilson. He is six foot six. He is a six foot six, two hundred and seventy five pound edge prospect who has the size, length, and athleticism that Ryan Poles looks for. He had an awesome senior season this year with fifty total pressures, ten quarterback hits, and eight sacks on the season. In the second round, I stick to the trenches, but I attack the offensive side of the ball, taking Tennessee's right tackle, Darnell Wright. There's a nice breakdown floating around on Twitter of Darnell Wright's one-on-one -on -one matchup with Will Anderson this year. He didn't give up a single sack. In fact, he didn't give up a sack all season long playing right tackle in the SEC. He's a 6'6", 335-pound mauler, who has nice knee bend and movement skills. He's generating more and more buzz as we head into the offseason and is a guy who could be a dominant starter on the right side of the offensive line. With the second of my two second round picks, I grabbed Bruce Feldman's number one player from his freaks list, Michigan defensive tackle Mozzie Smith. I just love this dude the more tape I see on him and I would love to see him on our defensive line. Afterwards, I take Iowa linebacker Jack Campbell to pair with Jack Sanborn, and then I take full advantage of Kayshawn Booty's fall-down draft boards. He was once seen as a first-round prospect, but he had a down year, dropping a lot of passes. He initially decided to stay in school for another year, but right before LSU's bowl game, he announced he's going pro. 
There are also some odd rumors going around about why Booty changed his mind. Bottom line is his draft stock is at an all-time low, which could be a really good thing for the team that picks him up. I finished this draft off with a couple more offensive line prospects, including two possible centers and a young, exciting speedster at running back, Deuce Vaughn. Then moving on to my next mock, this time I chose to trade down with the Carolina Panthers all the way to number 9 overall. The Panthers came up to take Bryce Young. This allowed me to take one of my favorite players in the draft at number 9 overall, while also picking up two extra second round picks and an extra third. I went with a guy I project as a perfect three tech in this defense, Brian Brzee from Clemson. He's six foot five, 300 pounds, and ran a 4740 and made Bruce Feldman's freak list, coming in at number 14. I love Brzee. He's one of my favorite prospects in the entire draft. I think he's a perfect fit at three tech. I think he becomes a favorite if we end up trading down in this draft. In the second round, I stick to the trenches once again, addressing the right side of the offensive line, this time with a different prospect, Ohio State's DeWan Jones. He's a massive right tackle. He's checking in at 6'8", 359 pounds. It'll be interesting to see how he scores athletically, but he has nice bend in his knees and good technique. I then once again couldn't resist going back to the well with Michigan's defensive tackle, Mozzie Smith, once again. Then with my fourth pick, I found an edge rusher I really like, Iowa State's Will McDonald. He's a similar prospect to Will Anderson in a lot of ways with his size and pass rush prowess. He was number five on Bruce Feldman's freak list and is a guy with a ton of pass rushing potential. I would love to see Will McDonald added any time after the second round. I then grabbed center prospect Jarrett Patterson. I love the depth in this center class and I think it's one of our biggest needs this offseason. Bottom line, Ryan Poles needs to leave this draft with at least one pick at center. I also nabbed Jack Campbell again. If he's available this late in the draft, he's going to be a steal in my opinion. And then Chase Brown from Illinois is a nice running back prospect with true home run speed. I'd love to add him to our running back room late. Kayshawn Booty again was on the board way too late and I couldn't pass up the opportunity to add another dangerous weapon for Justin Fields. I cannot wait for the draft this year. It's in Kansas City. There's even a chance I go to the draft this year. We'll see. I'd love to get that number one pick and use it to trade down and acquire a ton of assets. That is the current dream, guys. Stay tuned. I have more Bears coverage coming. I will be releasing more draft and free agency preview videos after this week's Vikings game as I shift focus into off-season mode. Stay tuned, guys. Please hit the like button for me. And until next time, bear down.